Hi. So, as I asked on uh, Instagram and uh, Twitter, Facebook, some of you uh, mentioned the interest about hearing how I deal with my carpal tunnel uh, issue on my day-to-day -day basis. I am a software engineer, uh, and I don't rely on those ergonomic-specific um, devices anymore. The way how I do it is, is by essentially trying to combine really good devices that are out there and adapt them by combining other products with it that would alleviate my pain and help me to go through the entire day essentially. So the very first item I want to show you and uh, sorry I will need to use my phone camera here as well but I lost the actual uh, thing that goes on the tripod today couldn't find so it's gonna be a little bit wobbly but that's it. Uh, the very first thing I want to show you is my actual mouse so let me switch your camera. Um, so this is the Logitech MX Master 3 uh, and again not necessarily those uh, vertical mouses nor a joystick mouse I used to use that before but really tricky to get used to them um, the benefit about using this mouse is because it is a palm rest type of mouse so my entire palm is actually on the mouse itself although it's not vertical it is still not flat so whenever I use this it uses more of a natural position of my hand uh, I'm going to talk about my wrist rest soon because that plays an important role on why I picked this mouse in specific. Another benefit of using the MX Master if you're a Mac or Windows user is because you can rely on the Logitech software and what that allows is for you to use a button that's in here called the accessible button and allows you to do gestures. So you hold the button, you go up and down and left and right and you can configure what those gestures are going to do on your OS. It's not the case for Linux, I'm using Linux uh, right now, but you still can rely on the other buttons if you wish. Um, the click here is quite soft, uh, so really easy to actuate and avoids finger fatigue, which is really good. Uh, you do have the magnetic scroll, which it can be unlimited, or you can use this button here to control how far uh, the magnets will allow the wheel to spin. You have buttons here, uh, in my case to go back and forth from the web page and you have horizontal scroll now the benefit again of using this on Windows or Mac it is because you have the software and every single button you see is remappable so let's say you're using Photoshop you can map this per application you can say that this uh, left uh, scroll button here it is actually for uh, the brush size so you can change the brush size uh, size if you want same goes to the back and forth and the actual button that you have right here so is the gestures now one of the things that I paired with this, so this alone wouldn't uh, help my, my carpal tunnel essentially. What really helps is a really good wrist rest. Majority of the wrist rests you, you see out there, uh, they're just flat. Maybe they have some memory foam or something like that, but your carpal tunnel is still resting onto something and therefore there's pressure on your carpal tunnel. Now the guy that I use to mitigate this it is this guy. And the way how it works is you rest your wrist like this and it just follows along. Now let me switch the camera so I can talk a little bit better about this product in specific. So that was my mouse and this is the wrist rest. Okay, here we go, let's focus. Here we go. So this is called Carpio 2.0 and it's made by Delta Hub, this company right there or right here, Delta Hub. So essentially what it does is it is a wrist rest uh, designed for carpal tunnel where your wrist lays like this onto it. It has a gliding fit, so it can actually glide on your mouse pad, follows the mouse as well. It's not a stationary, which is really good. And as you can see, it kind of forces your hand to sit in the proper position, given its shape. Another benefit is, compared to the regular wrist rest you see out there, besides just following your hand, is the fact that you do have a gap or a tunnel right here and that is what alleviates the pressure on your carpal tunnel. It leaves this area without any pressure to be seated on. You're just using you know, your palm to actually rest onto it and it just follows the mouse as I showed previously. Now, they sell this in, in various sizes and for left and right hands. And on the website, they actually guide you to figure uh, what's your hand size with the proper carpal device and different colors as well. I picked gray just because dirt and everything is just easier to clean but they have white and black in my case i have two one for the left side one for the right side um, because i have carpal tunnel issues on both wrists um sure i do use this a lot with my mouse but then i do also use both with my keyboard uh, just because again it alleviates the pressure 
right here which is really really beneficial now that alone doesn't necessarily help me i mean it, i can go through with no pain throughout the entire day but that's just my mouse i do type quite a lot because you know software developer and now on typing i do rely on this as well as i mentioned because then again i can rest my wrist alleviate the pressure on the carpal tunnel but nothing would be as beneficial as having a really good keyboard for that so there are tons of keyboards out there you can try the membrane keyboards that logitech does offer as an example such as the mx series uh, and it's really good because really low profile uh, really uh, fast actuation as well you don't need to punch them up but that much force but i tend to prefer uh, to optical keyboards sorry not optical but mechanical keyboards and i'm going to tell you why soon one of the things I've used in the past was actually those split and ergonomic keyboards. Never got used to it, and that bothered me really, really a lot. Uh, and that's why I started using membrane key keyboards back in the days, just because again, fast actuation, and then you know you still can uh, rest your your wrist on those crappy uh, memory foam uh, wrist rest essentially. But it was just working fine for me until I started getting more into mechanical keyboards. Um, the reason being they're fully customizable, right? So you can get uh, fixed uh, switch keyboards mechanical keyboards where then you need to solder and the solder switches if you want to or in this case I have a hot swappable one so now let me first talk about the actual size of the keyboard let me switch the cameras to show you real quick so this is what they call by a 65% layout or 65 layout essentially where you still have the arrow keys you still have the home cluster on the vertical uh, and the benefit of using this, it is not necessarily ergonomic by being split, but it is ergonomic in a sense where it just sits nicely in front of you and you're just resting your wrist on your wrist rest in a really natural position essentially and typing. Uh, whenever you have those with the numpad, uh, you know, the keyboard tends to be seated more on your side because you still need space for the mouse. In this case in particular, the mouse has its own space and I type right straight in front of me. Um, there is another variant, which is the T key well or 10 key list, where you have the arrow keys here on the side and the home cluster without the numeric, uh, the numeric uh, pad, but it still takes a considerable space. I found that the 65 is really good because I still have uh, the arrows and the hum cluster so I can go through my editors and everything. I don't necessarily have the function keys right here, but I'm going to talk about this later because everything here is remappable. Now there are smaller variants such as 60 and even 30% where you have only the letters, but then you got to get used to typing with the proper function keys to be able to access the different layers on the keyboard. Uh, sure, it is slightly better because it's a smaller form factor, therefore you have more space to the mouse here on the side but never got used to it. So now I'm gonna go back to my face a little bit because we're getting tired of holding the phone. Now the benefit of using a, a mechanical keyboard like this, it is because first it is hot swappable. So I can use any switches I want. So the switch is essentially the little thing that goes between the keycap, you know, the one with the letters and the actual keyboard plate. Uh, and the benefit of being able to switch the switches is that a switch in a specific might cost you around you know 70 cents or so um, and as much as that sounds cheap you have tons of keys on your keyboard and that can add up to maybe 50 or even 70 bucks even pricier than that depending on the switch you're talking about you add lubing so then you have proper you know uh, proper clicking no noise and everything and that can get really pricey so there is one thing they sell online called switch tester what it can get is it's like a tiny keyboard, like four or five spots or so. You buy just individual switches, 70 cents each one, and you can test the switch you like the most. Now, switches are not only about sound, as people might think. In my case, I pick because of sound, one of them. I don't like clicky switches at all. I'm always in meetings, so I need quiet switches. Uh, but also, rate spring. So the, the spring inside of the switch as well is something you can look after, and they have different rates. In my case, as far as I'm concerned, I believe mine is... 52 or 57 grams to actuate you have things such as the whites or even the max silvers where it can go up to i think i think the, the the maximum force is like 35 grams to actuate so it's really light and if you have finger fatigue that's really good in my case i found that 65 it is my limit where it it's not going to give me any finger fatigue yet i can just rest if i wish my fingers into the keyboard and it's not going to accidentally press any keys 
uh, it is for sure lubed just because then it is a smoother actu actuation and quiet uh, and in this case here it's a linear switch so it's a linear actuation there is no click and there is no tactile feedback as well it just goes down and that's pretty much it my switches are called silk emeralds and that's just because they're a special version of the silk yellows also made by novel keys um, this is these are the specs of my switches now the keyboard itself let me go back to the keyboard now that my hands are better um, this is an NK65 or Novel Key 65. As I mentioned, it's a 65% keyboard. Uh, and the benefit about this keyboard is that it is fully customizable and hot swappable. So this starts at 95 US dollars, I believe, with no switches nor keycaps. And sure, you can keep adding as much as you keep switching your switches and keycaps. That can go crazy. Like there are keycaps that are like $100 or so and some of them they do benefit you from better typing some are just because you're fancy or whatever in this particular case this was a 195 US dollars board fully assembled with the switches I picked and the keycaps I picked uh, this is the random Frank P version actually and um, one of the benefits of the NK65 in a specific now let me switch the cams because my voice is really tiny is that it is compatible with via so whenever we're talking about custom keyboards there are proprietary firmware and then you got to use the keyboard manufacturer software which might not be compatible to your operational system in my case i use the three major ones linux windows and mac os so linux is something that i use on a daily basis i program on it and i really need something that works on it so using an open source firmware such as qmk is something ideal now in this particular case this keyboard accepts at qmk and also via so VIA is a fork or an enhanced version of QMK, whereas QMK, every, every single mapping you do, you need to reflash your keyboard. In VIA, it is actually kind of real time. So every time I change your configuration, it automatically applies to the keyboard. The benefit of using any of these is that uh, I can literally remap anything I want on my keyboard. As I mentioned, it's a smaller profile. I need to get used to the keys. Maybe I need to add multimedia keys. I need to add the volume keys, whatever I need to do. So you can do that. You can configure and it persists the configuration to the keyboard. So if I plug to another device, even if they don't have the VIA software installed, uh, it still works out of the box. If they do, I can just load their VIA configuration on the fly into my keyboard as an example, uh, which I do I do use a lot. So whenever I'm switching between Mac OS, uh, Windows and Linux as an example, I have VIA in all the three and they have their different configurations which just gets loaded on the fly. But if it wasn't the case, if I had the software in just one of them, I could still load the profile and uh, persist and then it would just work on the other one, not a big deal. Now, this one in particular has what they call by layers. By using the function key or FN key on your keyboard, you can access multiple layers on your keyboard. So let's say you have three layers. This means that whatever you type without holding the function key will do something. And then if you hold the function key, will do something else and so on. Um, one of the benefits as well is that let's say you have V installed in just one of your OSs, but not on the other ones. You can have layer per uh, operational system as well. So maybe my layer zero is my Linux. And then if I hold function, it's gonna access some of the layers on my Mac OS, such as the media keys for Mac OS. Uh, but if I do via, then I can have several layers for my Linux and several layers for my Mac. So maybe I can use macros because you can do macros on this thing. So then I can have layers with macros on my Linux that will allow me to automatically compile Java, compile whatever we didn't want to compile. And then the same thing for Mac OS um, and things like that which is really good. So again, the benefit is a small form factor. So it's right in front of me for me to type. I can use my car appeal on it as well. And my mouse is resting right on the side. And that's essentially my setup. Let me change here my camera so you can see. So this is right in front of me for me to type. And then I have here my mouse on the side. Whenever I want to fully type, I bring this over here and that's it. This, this is really interesting. This is a desk mat by the same company from Carpio called Delta Hub. And this just glides really good, really smooth on it. So does the mouse. And again, 65% layout. They have smaller than this without the arrow keys, without anything, just the letters. But then you gotta get used to the function key keys or FN keys to be able to access the other functionalities on your keyboard, essentially. Um, so that's keyboard. And you know, this one in specific number of case comes with a nice travel case in case you really wanna bring it everywhere you just do it 
and that's it right so that's it for the keyboard so keyboard and mouse so that's my keyboard and mouse another thing i used as well which doesn't necessarily uh, and improves by any means my carpal tunnel but avoids finger fatigue because every time you need to do a macro or something like that you need to use combination of keys on your keyboard and then i do have finger fatigue so one of the devices that i use to overcome that is the stream deck xl so again changing to my phone so this is the stream deck xl by elgato um here I'm using it on Linux. There is a Python program that allows me to customize this for Linux, even though Elgato doesn't have the software for Linux, just for Windows and Mac OS. And here you can see that's mapped all my uh, OBS uh, keys, but I have my lights as well here. I can control my Elgato ring and everything. Uh, I also have macros here to compile code and everything else. So instead of pressing multiple keys on my keyboard, all I need to do is to type one of these buttons and, and it does the job for me. For example, now I'm gonna switch to my man camera and boom. As simple as that, I just switched to the main camera. Now, that's essentially my setup to code. Another important thing, as you can see, I'm seated all this time, right? Throughout this video. And that's the case whenever I'm working as well. I sit almost eight hours a day. Uh, not to say that I sit almost eight hours a day, I do stand a little bit. So the next thing I'm gonna talk about is my standing desk, which is really nice. So changing the camera here again. Let me bring it up. Let's bring this up. So I'm gonna present my setup later like the YouTubers they do, but for now, standing desk. As you can see, it's going up by itself. Ignore the cable management. I really, I'm really bad at that, but essentially this is my Standard desk. It is made by Autonomous AI. It goes as this high as an example. It can hold all this weight, not a big deal. Uh, and, you know, still working with my, my wrist rest here. So I can just keep working, not a big deal and everything. And whenever I'm tired, I go to the, what I call by the most important part of the setup, which is my chair. So this is a Herman Miller and body. That's the uh, collab between Herman Miller and Logitech, essentially. Uh, the, the difference between this and the regular M body is that it has a cooling fabric. So whenever you're seated, it's gonna keep your body really chill. Now, this is fully customizable and really ergonomic. You have adjustability here for your legs in case you have shorter or longer legs. Uh, the, the, arm, uh, the, the arm support, they also move up and down, back and forth and everything and the benefit here is the lumbar support so it has a 3d mesh where it adjusts to your lumbar actually and with all these buttons here you can actually configure for how tight or how soft you want the the pressure here on your lumbar as well and you know how much you want to move it uh, on the back or just support your back so going back to the actual regular camera right now uh, one of the things i suggest you to start working on your setup is the chairs if you're looking for a chair and you keep talking about those gaming chairs that looks like a car seat like a things like that just ignore those a chair like this costs a lot of money um, here in canada i paid more than one thousand canadian dollars um, i'm pretty sure in brazil if you're a brazilian and you're watching me this is going to cost you a little bit of money to be honest with you but I'm a car enthusiast and what I tell people is whenever they want to start modding their vehicles they go after exhaust and things like that and I'm like no the very first mod you got to do is tires and wheels in the entire setup because tires and wheels they can change the way how your your car feel and handles essentially it can be safer you know it can it can be tail happy if you wish to you can buy ter uh, crabby tires to be tail happy or it can buy really grippy tires if you're looking for that time on your track session in the case of a software development setup, the chair is the one that I spend majority of the time. I do have a standing desk, but I find myself sitting majority of the time, to be honest with you, just because meetings and everything else. So you really need a, a good chair to go throughout the day. Otherwise, you're going to start having back issues and everything else. I have proper arm support over here where I can just rely on my wrist rest as well because I'm in the same height uh, with my standing desk as an example. So first things first forget about those gaming chairs save some money and get you some really decent ergonomic chair as you can see it doesn't look like a racing car chair or anything like that but that's because it was built to help my body and not to look like something as any streamer out there would use 
So you got your chair, you got your tires. Next thing, now you can get to some of the uh, cosmetic, but not so much cosmetic and still functional things of your setup. The next one I'd say would be, uh, if you're a programmer, the keyboard. Okay, so you can find the keyboard that suits you best, your operational system. If you don't use Windows, if you don't use Linux and you mainly rely on Mac OS or Windows, you can get things such as Keychron. Keychron mainly works has the software to, to work on, on Mac OS and Windows as an example, has really decent um, custom-ish keyboards where you can still swap the switches to your needs and the keycaps as well. Uh, and you can still remap some of the keys as well by using their software just not really compatible with Linux, but you do have that option. Or you can get something with QMK or even better, VIA, that you can fully customize. And maybe you don't wanna get a hot swap because that might cost you more money. You can still get fixed boards or you can customize your board. First things first, you get a, a switch tester. You get 70 cents every single one, one of the, the switches you wanna test. You find the one that fits you better. And then you, you need to be really good at soldering but then all you can do to minimize the cost is you buy all the switches you want right now you get a pcb or a board uh, and then you start soldering all the switches you you just selected or if you have a bigger budget you can go for the hot swap options now maybe you can get those 50 bucks 40 bucks ones on amazon which is fine but then depending on the factory you go in because they do not support those softwares i just mentioned you're stuck to the actual functionality of that keyboard. You cannot remap it. So that's one thing to keep in mind. When I got my 65% size, because I wanted something a little bit more ergo with more space to my mouse as well, I was looking for something that I could just remap. So then I still have the insert key as an example to be able to enter my characters on, on VI or Vim. Um, I can remap my backspace whenever I press FN and, and backspace, it actually triggers my delete button, which I don't have on this keyboard, but then I can make it work. So everything like that just works nice. Now, uh, that's pretty much it in terms of uh, hardware that I use. And trust me, you know, you really want to spend money on supporting your body on your day-to-day -day activities, reason being, I haven't done this in the past and I have this freaking thing for more than 10 years and that's what I've been spending money at. So those are all recommended by my doctors to be honest with you and I have more than eight of these uh, throughout the house and this is one of the most sturdy ones that I have. It's all metal in this mesh so it's good for my body and then I have all the metal, st metal things. Whenever it's really painful my wrist I use this one here and then I just rest throughout the entire day so then I can get to the next day brand new. Uh, or whenever I'm not working or anything like that, I just regularly use this one, which is a little bit more flexible. I have more flexibility to do my stuff. And uh, if I need to lift some weight or something like that, I tend to use this because then it just helps to keep uh, my, my wrist in a really good shape, essentially. But you don't really want to spend money on these. You know, like these are not cheap either. These are, these are not like 10 bucks. These are like $70 each, you know? These I actually spent $100 and I have two of these. So when you start summing everything, you actually spent money just to support the issues you've been going through. And now you realize you can actually put money that will work for you in the long run in your setup. If you don't have that issue yet, if you don't suffer from carpal tunnel, but you're a developer, I mean, you'd rather just spend money on a mouse like this and on the wrist rests than putting money towards, you know, these things here essentially. So again, I, I understand it does cost money, but it pays off in the long run. That's essentially my setup. That's what works for me. As I mentioned to some other folks, I've tried in the past to use those uh, vertical mouses. I tried to use the joystick mouses as well. Never got used to them, but this one here, you know, again, it's not flat. It's not vertical. It is just a natural position, palm shaped, work with the, re the wrist rest, which guess what? Follows the exact same shape, you know, not flat, as you can see. Uh, same for the keyboards. Try to work with those split layout keyboards, like ergonomic membrane split keyboards. Never got used to those. So this is what's been working for me. Again, I have this issue for more than 10 years now. Uh, and, and that's pretty much it. You know, one advice I can give you is start investing on your chairs. Back pain is really serious. Um, really nice desk. You can stand 
even if you stand just 30 minutes a day that's better than nothing and then you go to the keyboard because you type a lot and then the mouse ignore the gaming chairs ignore gaming keyboards ignore gaming mouses they have a purpose which is gaming if you're working you need a better better purpose which is fully functional and ergonomic because trust me I'm not that old but I feel like I'm, I'm extremely old just because of all the pain I go through uh, if you have any questions in specific uh, to any of those products I'm showing you know the car pill they go usually around 40 pounds it is in pounds uh, this one here got sent to me from Slovenia the same about the desk pad from Delta Hub so that this is a Delta Hub car pill 2.0 okay it is written as delta hub like 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 in the pouch every single one of them comes with a pouch that you can put in the, the carry and you can travel with it um, they do offer uh, discounts for combos so two of these actually cost me 70 pounds which yes it does sound like a lot of money but I'm pretty sure people out there they spend tons of money on those razor mouse pads anyway so way better option for you um, the mouse this goes around um, 130 dollars Canadian uh, which for some of the viewers that might be in Brazil that might sound like a lot of money because it is but again it is all about your health and letting you go through the entire day which contributes to your performance as well and efficiency and the keyboard the novel keys this is called NK65 entry model uh, this starts at 90 dollars as I mentioned and um, it doesn't come with switches nor keycaps so you gotta add that and then you can get to the unlimited value to be honest with you this in particular costed uh, 195 uh, US dollars but that's because it was a pre-built the random Frank P edition so it is a plastic uh, case not aluminum they do sell aluminum if you want to um, it comes with silk emerald switches as I mentioned which is just a a different color for uh, the silk yellows from the same brand um, novel keys and the random Frank P keycaps which are in this case I believe they are PBT so PBT keycaps they are better than ABS because they don't shine like you know like those keyboards you use too much like it's all shiny this doesn't happen with PBT this kind of material so um, and then you can get really pricey on the keyboard section there is those bespoke luxury keyboards that can cost like three grand or so like US dollars that's ridiculous but if 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 that's your your thing and, and you are into the, the the keyboard community kind of thing and you really want that yeah go ahead you know you can build really nice keyboards actually just because everything is customizable but again my pro tip is get one that has a software for the platform you're looking to use because then you can remap pretty much everything and again hot swappable makes your life easier because it might cost you a little bit more money to have a PCB that's hot swappable but whenever you want to switch your switches you just do it and you can get one with the actuation force you want based on the spring rate you want in my case again it's a 65 gram actuation you can get a max silvers which I believe are 35 grams so really really easy to actuate the keys you can get tactile linears even clicky which I don't like um, it's the clicking noise uh, and you can lube them as well you can add lubricants to them so they actually they actually feel smoother they sound nicer as well uh, but more importantly the, the, the feel it doesn't have that rattly and, and scratchy feel to it it's really smooth actuation just don't over lube otherwise they get stuck as well but that's it you know if you have any questions in specific to any of the specific uh, products including the stream deck just hit me and I can make another video about them if you have any questions in specific about how do I go through my day-to-day -day with this issue you know I can I can answer that as well but that's essentially my regular setup nothing ergonomic specific to go through my carpal tunnel issues just using really nice quality products and the only ergo product I have is the car pill which was designed for carpal tunnel as I mentioned just because it has the tunnel which alleviates the pressure on your carpal tunnel but that's it thanks for watching